find them. Welcome back, you muggles and nerds. I am your host, Titan, and today we are going to be talking about Hogwarts Legacy. If you're like me and you grew up watching or even reading the Harry Potter series, then Hogwarts Legacy is definitely the game for you. Being able to fully explore Hogwarts in all of its glory, discovering recognizable places, and being able to just immerse yourself in the wizarding world is an absolute dream come true. It is truly a magical experience. I really love that I could just role play how I wanted to. And of course, if you know me, you know I had to choose the house Slytherin. I mean, who doesn't want to be a dark wizard after all? The only real downfall about it is I couldn't make myself look like Voldemort, so a regular looking guy had to do. And also have a confession to make. In the beginning of the game, I didn't know that you could actually change how your outfit looked. So every time I would get a new piece of gear, I was like, oh, this is stronger. And then like, I just kept looking dumber and dumber. So eventually I got to the point where I was like, I don't like any of these outfits, I look dumb. And then Phoenix was like, you know you can change it, right? And I was like, oh, and that completely changed the game for me. And I was finally able to just look the part. But before we move on, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. So let's get right down to business. I want to break down my likes and dislikes of the game and I kind of want to start off on my dislikes so we end on a better note because I have so many more positive notes than I do negatives. So getting right to it, my first dislike is going to be that there's really no consequences for your action in this game. No matter what path you choose to go down, all paths really lead to the same road, other than a few cutscenes that may be different and a few interactions that are different. But generally speaking, in the world itself, there are no real consequences. No one's going to treat you different, no one's going to act different towards you if you do choose to go down a darker path. My second complaint has to be that there are some really boring side quests in this game. Not all of them, but there are just some that are just so boring that I never did. And in fact, I went out of my way not to do them because I felt that they would not be anything that my character would do, especially as a Slytherin. There was a lot of times where they would be asking me to do really silly stuff that felt meaningless to the world and things that even in a fictional world people really just wouldn't ask you to do, especially since they don't even know who you are in this game. And the last thing that I want to talk about, and it's really my main complaint of the game, and that is that PlayStation players actually had an exclusive quest that is extremely cool and fun. So PC players like me or Xbox or even the Switch coming out soon will never get to experience this mission and it really sucks. A little story is that when we were playing, Phoenix had found out from a friend that there is actually a really dark and horror feeling side quest. And we spent hours trying to figure out how do we activate the quest? Do we talk to this person? Do we do this? Do we have to complete the story to a certain point? And we just couldn't figure it out. So after digging and digging, we found out, again, this is a PlayStation exclusive quest. And why this is a problem for me is that we all pay the same price for this game. There is no reason that PlayStation should have any more content than anyone else for the same price. It's not like a DLC and this is not a Sony exclusive game. This is not owned by Sony. So it's not fair to other players that they don't get to enjoy this extra content that is part of the game. To me, if we are all paying the same price, especially with the ridiculous price point of games these days, is that we should all be getting the same amount of content if we are paying for the same thing. But with that being said and out of the way, I want to move on to my likes. And I want to start with my first one, the most simple one, is I absolutely loved the Unforgivable Curses. It is so satisfying to be able to Avada Kedavra anyone that gets in your way. Ah, King Julian! The boy who lived, come to die! <gasps> but really, all of the spells in the game were really fun to me. And what I really liked is that the game made sure that you always used every type of spell. That even if you had your build set up, they would throw curveballs at you that would require you to change how you played. For example, the different colored shields that you would have to match your spell with in order to break that shield, that to me was really fun because it forced me to think. Sometimes I would get so caught up in the moment that I would be looking at the shield and still trying to use another spell and I'm like, why are they not dying? And then it clicked. I'm like, oh crap, I have to use this color, that spell. And it just, it really was fun because it forced me to use the different mechanics that the game offers. 
secondly, the Wizarding World was just a really open and enjoyable place. They really made this immersive with the people that you could interact with. And one of the more funnier things to me is the two armored knights in the hallway that are completely arguing all the time and hitting each other. And then they eventually just break down and the other kills one. And it's just, it's hilarious. It's fun to see. And it's cool that they pay attention to that kind of stuff. They add the fun stuff and stuff that you could just walk past a million times and never even notice. I really enjoy that. Other than the world though, I will have to say that the story is phenomenal. I won't get into any spoilers here, but I really had fun the entire time that I was playing this. But at the same time, I spent more time trying to complete the story because it was so fun. I really enjoyed it. I had to get to the next mission as fast as possible. That I really didn't put as much time into everything that I should have. Which does kind of bring me into my next point. And it's a tip for new players. Enjoy the game. Take your time. This game has so much to offer. All the different potions that you can craft. All the different plants that you can use. Even the vivarium. It is all so unique. There is so much fun to be had. But if you're like me and you enjoy the story, you have to take your time. That is all I can say. I cannot stress that enough. My first playthrough, I did not pay attention to really anything. I sped right through the story and it wasn't until the end of the game when I started making more potions and using the, the plants and really just starting to explore the world in general. I was so caught up in trying to move to the next mission that I didn't pay attention to a lot of the things that I should have. And in hindsight, I see that if I would have taken my time from the beginning of the game and just learned how to do all this stuff, if I took the time to collect resources and get the things that I needed, even find different animals in the world to put in my vivarium and take care of, I would have had a lot more fun. And I would have been able to spend a lot more time playing the game. Because after beating the game, I didn't really have the motivation to continue playing the game. Or put the much time into crafting things because I didn't feel it was needed anymore. And so I lost hours of gameplay just because I wanted to rush it. So again, my tip to any new player is to just take your time and enjoy the game. The story can wait. I truly adored Hogwarts Legacy. The game was extremely fun, from the people, to the animals, to the spells and the crafting. Everything was just beautiful. And I can't forget about how fun flying was, especially picking up the broom and flying for the first time. It was really just a fantastic experience that I will never forget. I do plan on replaying this game in the future because I had that much fun playing it my first time. And since the new game feeling is out of my system, and it's been off my mind for a while too. So being able to jump back in, I don't have to worry about rushing through the story because I know it. So I can take my time and really enjoy all the little things that I missed in my first playthrough. If they ever choose to make a second Hogwarts game with a different story and different characters, what I really hope that they improve is that they expand on the world a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger. Also, I hope that they would add consequences for your actions. Maybe make it two different stories for people that want to go down a darker path or people that choose to be the hero. I would have loved to see people react to me using the killing curses in a really negative way and then treat me different because of that instead of just being like, oh, unforgivable. Well, I forgive you this time. But folks, that wraps up my video for today, so I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button for me, and join us every Friday morning. I'll be there, so you be there. <laughs>